presentation. Uh, but as you know, Thomas Lennox runs one of the world's largest Hi, so hi, good morning, Thomas. I was just saying that you run one of the world's largest cochlear implant units, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing your surgery this morning, which I gather was with the Advanced Bionics cochlear implant. We have the reps from the company here, and for those watching live, there's a chat set up on the uh, live stream, so you can send questions over to us uh, if you, as, we're, as Thomas is operating. So over to you, Thomas. I hope we have some sound from you, and you can perhaps tell us Hello. about your case Hello. for the morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. You could do more volume. I don't know if we can control. Can we control that at this end, Bert? Could you just volume up a little bit? Uh, okay. It's a little bit quiet. Okay, we can try that. A bit louder, machen bitte vom Mikrofon. Die hören das nicht. Danke. No? Hello. Okay, that's better. I think we're fine now. Chris, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, Is I can. And good morning to you, Thomas. Hi. Okay. Okay. Great. Good morning. So. Um, um, we have a um, patient, she um, is 20 years old, she has congenital deafness and was, implant was implanted on her right in 1996 with an advanced bionics device at that time called Clarion 1.2 um, and now she is asking for a second implant. Actually she has, actually she has qu um, very good uh, speech device. Um, very good. Uh, uh, she is to speak on the phone, uh, but she um, complains about um, not so good hearing under noisy conditions, and that's now the reason why she is asking for a second implant, um, even second implant. So it's a long time um, being deaf on that side. Uh, more that these patients uh, will benefit uh, when the first ear was implanted early on. Okay, now you see um, here on the audiogram, she has um, a little uh, corner. Uh, corner um, hearing here left side, not very much, right side is deaf. Look on the CT scan, we can see here uh, the right side, that is left side, right side she has the electrode, which basically uh, we can follow here over uh, several of the scans. Uh, you see some of the electrode dots uh, here in the right corner. Uh, on the left side, we also see normal anatomy, we can see here basal turn, second turn of the cochlear. Um, anatomy of the mastoid is normal, and so we would expect uh, not uh, any difficulty. We can see here also the round window niche on the niche on here. Okay, that's uh, basically our case here. So that's interesting. So Thomas, can you just tell us a little bit about funding? Is it easy to get funding for a second side implant uh, on this lady in Germany? Yeah, no, um, that is um, that is um, uh, easy in a way that um, the health insurance companies have to pay for that. Um, there is um, from the Supreme Court a decision, a decision saying that um, to the patient uh, we have to provide the best possible solution for his hearing problem, uh, which means that two implants are better than one. And uh, that's what uh, they have to pay for. So that's the uh, situation we have in Germany. Um, and of course, we make a case-by-case -case decision and uh, also asking the, um, the health insurance companies before um, so that they agree. But in principle, they have to pay for that. OK, that's great. Okay. So just you want to talk us through your surgery? Oh, yeah, well, that's, uh, it was a fight uh, to, get it, to get the funding. So, okay, now we have here, um, I think, is the Bildschirm, was ich das sehen kann, was man, kann man hier auf diese Kamera gehen, bitte? Das hier, ne? Okay, bisschen größer machen, bitte. Kann man das größer machen, bitte, hier dieses Bild? Okay, now we have here already started with the uh, retroauricular skin incision. Bitte mal eine Kompressor. And you see here, we just do it um, as a normal ear surgery uh, incision. Um, then um, we go um, we go for here the for a periostal flap, which is anteriorly based and which we'll use then to cover the mastoid and the parts of the implant later on. Then we have here temporalis muscle, have here temporalis muscle which lifted. Um, now we already have started to do the mastoidectomy, uh, which is um, uh, which is um, basically 
done. You can, of course, then go for different uh, dimensions. Um, it's important that we have a good exposure um, of the posterior outer ear canal, which you can see here. We go upwards here, um, to here, um, in, um, in, um, to the uh, middle fossa, and then we also expose in the mastoid uh, the pigment sinus, but we uh, leave it covered by bone. And then we want to also expose here the sinus dura angle, because that is the orientation where we can place the implant above and uh, behind it, and then we make a kind of either a tunnel or a trough for the electrode cable. So that's where we are at, at the electrode cable. So that's at the moment. Go to microscope that you see it better. Bitte auf Mikro stellen. Ist das abgezogen? Ja. Ist dann okay. Oh, das ist aber schmutzig, mein Mann, Mann. So, okay, now I hope we get it sharp. Let's say just a second. Uh, so. I hope, I hope that looks good, thanks. Nice okay. That's nice and sharp. Thank you. Okay. Good. And now uses sort of pretty it. standard post-auricular incision now. Exactly. That's what we normally yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. So now we, we just um, start with the, or continue with the drilling. So if you can just you point out your the landmarks the once again now for us. Now we've got the microscopic yeah. marks once again now, microscopic yeah. okay. view. Uh, that would be great for the audience. Thank you. Okay. I see now here the postural, what we already drilled. That's the mastery tip. That would be the temporal uh, li um, line. The muscle is lifted upward here. And then we have here uh, the sinus dura angle. We still have to skeletonize more the posterior wall. And uh, so you see here. Wollen Sie mal einen frischen, bitte? Nein, ja, das Ding ist stumpf wie sonst was. So, and now you see, we can here easily go uh, towards the epitympanum. We need a bit more extension in this direction. Makes it easier to uh, identify the incus uh, because that's an important landmark for the exposure of the facial nerve. So, you see here just that we Skeletonize more the posterior wall, uh, and then from there we can go upward to the um, to the antrum. Then it's important that we uh, remove your corner septum, uh, which gives us then a good exposure to the antrum. We will see it in a second. So that's a, a well pneumatized. Uh, temporal bone. Here you see the the sigmoid sinus uh, where I am drilling on, where I am drilling on, and then we can also expose here the posterior um, um, fossa dura, Trautmann's trial, which uh, comes down here. We don't have to cut uh, all the bone out because it's only our um, uh, root to the inner ear, and uh, so we you must not really skeletonize everything. Uh, so really, you only want to get a posterior tympanotomy. So you, you don't really need to do a massive amount of drilling. It's just to find that right. facial nerve, yeah. That's right. So I just have to um, uh, correct the position here. Wait, that you can see better into the. Orientation towards the orientum, bit of weiter. Danke. So now you see here more skeletonizing of the posterior wall is helpful. We will see later on because we want to identify facial nerve and also the the, um, the corda. And uh, if you skeletonize the, po the posterior wall, that is helpful uh, in order to get this done. Bitte abnehmen. So we now have uh, partially here exposed the epitympanum going uh, more anteriorly. Here would be the um, middle fossa uh, 
still not the Dura uh, exposed, all covered by bone. And here now we go into the into the antrum. And here already down here we see the um, the semicircular canal. I show you more uh, in detail with higher magnification in a second. Just want to remove a bit more bone here. We have to be careful not to touch here the dura. Here we don't have a problem, but sometimes uh, the dura is hanging down, especially when you approach the antrum. And therefore, we have to be more careful if we do that. So, okay, now we uh, have basically uh, reached here the semicircular, and then we go higher in magnification to show you that to show you that so these are, they're a pleasure in many ways because the the uh, mastoid is so healthy and well well ventilated not really like clastiotoma cases yeah you see yeah you see here now that you see here the we see we have a lot of space now here in this uh, ear it's not narrow so but um, again being careful bit it in drei nuller so now we expose a drei null rausen butter uh, butter Okay, now we have to remove a bit more bone here, and then we uh, should be able to see the um, incus. To see the at the incus, no? Yeah. Okay, at the incus, no? So of course more if you if you need, um, but that's an important orientation um, we have to go for, and in these years where we have. So this normal anatomy, that's, I think, straightforward surgery. So, so we have a question that's been sent in. Do you have a facial nerve monitor? Facial nerve monitor. Um, a facial nerve monitor. Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, we do it in uh, children and we, in revision cases and malformations. Um, we could also um, we do it in adults. Now we say, well, we, we think that we uh, are able to do without um, because normally the facial nerve is covered by bone and uh, so we don't must um, be afraid that it's basically exposed. Oh, here can you no one give it to So now we see here Approaching now the incus and show you that it's still not exposed here. I need a bit more of I need a bit more space here. But okay, so bit mal so now the okay. The question uh, do we think or not? I think uh, the safe side is to use a, a diamond. Once we have done this uh, bone removal here, so okay, now we'll do that. Bitte mal Diamant 2,0. So we already can see head of the ingots, but I remove a bit more bone so that you can better see it. It's a nice and Straightforward. Straightforward. So, now so just explain to the audience your marks now, and uh, Thomas. Yeah. Well, what we do is just to start here. Uh, so first we see the head, and I will show you, and then we. So the landmark is that we follow. Do not unsauger, bitte. That we follow um, the um, post the um, posterior and superior wall of the outer ear canal. Uh, that's just here. And we go into the yep. epitumbanum. Now, yep. In the epitumbanum. And then you just uh, can follow it until, and then you see the here, with the nadel leicht geschwungen. And you can see the, 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 ingus, there. the ingus body. Well, these are just a few adhesions here of the mucosa and here you see we see now the chain moving that so is see, the yeah we see the ingus yeah. 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 still want to um, go a bit further uh, towards the um,
go by uh, towards Fossa Incudis, bit of bone, and a bit more bone here, just to know where that is, where uh, is the tip of the shop rose, or at least close to it, so that we know where the buttress is, and then we also can use that as a landmark for the posterior tympanotomy. You see here now, very nicely, Here, the, near the tip. Now we have not touched it, so that's that's okay. Put a bit number 3,0 rosen. So now we have to do more work um, in Fairly because we want to know where the facial nerve is. And uh, okay. so you see, we still have bone here on the posterior wall, and now we can. Just skeletonize it. Genize it. Okay, now the orientation is that we have the incus is here, and this line actually we have to reflect um, when we move now anteriorly because that, that is the orientation for the facial nerve. So, of course, you can now argue do we have to expose facial nerve or not? Um, we do it, or at least we want not to expose, but we want to know where the canal is because it gives us um, then good orientation um, how much we can actually remove in the posterior uh, tympanotomy area. So and what, okay, do you what do you say to the patients about the risks of the facial nerve? The risks of the face. What's the uh, failure rate in these cases? Yeah, okay. So actually it's, uh, it's, it's below 1%, 1 but it's not zero. Uh, um, our statistics say uh, that we have 0.4% uh, or so of facial nerve palsy and it occurs in cases where you have either um, malformations, that's one thing, or where you have revision or where you have a uh, misjudgment, I think, about the facial nerve itself. So I agree with you that it probably would be wise to, to um, use nerve monitoring. I think there is no objection against it, but it's not uh, to say that you don't get facial nerve palsy if you use it, no? because there is still some risk that if you have no proper orientation that you might miss the nerve. Um, Hi Tom, okay. can I just can I ask that figure you're giving us is that for a temporary facial nerve weakness or for a permanent facial nerve yeah. weakness? Yeah, both both can occur. Both. both can occur. I mean, um, the point is that we have um, actually, I think two cases have a permanent palsy out of seven thousand or so surgeries. Or everything included, and therefore we, of course, have to tell have to tell the patient. But the risk is really low, um, and I think it's much lower than in uh, conventional ear surgery or in um, ear surgery uh, overall, where we have um, cholesteatoma cases and so on. Um, um, so. Of course, there is a risk, but the, mo uh, the most important point is that we, uh, I think, know about the anatomy, and uh, so that's why we we make this exposure, which gives us, I think, the best uh, help for orientation and also that we don't um, make just a hole, make just a hole somewhere, but that we. Exactly where it is. So now from the orientation, the einmal einem Diamantbohrer, 3,0, but it just want to stop the bleeding here. So you see, I have now taken away a much more, taken away a much more uh, anti, but we still are not completely done because you still see a few cells here. So when you skeletonize, it's important that we. So that's good. Okay, so. 
Dann werden wir nochmal zurück den äh, Rosenbohrer. So, okay, so now we have here again orientation incus for the incudis. Now we just follow this line and the facial nerve should come here. No? Um, so that's what we have on. Still not completely done. Completely done. We have a bit of bone. This, to remove the bone is, uh, is important. We should not. This, to remove the bone is important. Posterior. Because that is, uh, of course, not desired. We don't want to have a weak posterior wall, which uh, would create some trouble. You could get cholesteatoma formation or uh, unintended exposure of the, of the electrode. Um, therefore, it's important to preserve it. Um, so now you see that we gradually go very carefully I go now more anteriorly. Now, if you want to be more careful, uh, or let's see if you have more difficult situation, then of course I would also go for the f uh, for the uh, diamond drill, which we will do in a second. I um, just want to remove here cells as much as I can. Okay, now here the facial nerve is coming with the diamond bohrer. Actually, I bohrer. can see me coming. I show you a bit better. And then we have a good orientation, and then we have here for, and then we have here for the incudis fish, and then where we can do posterior tympanotomy. Now it's diamond. Of course, you could continue also with the uh, cutting. I have to sharpen it a bit more. So, so you see, you can remove quite a lot of bone. Until you reach the face, until you reach the facial nerve. I think for the novices, it's always there's always more bone than you think, isn't there? When you first exactly. start doing this sort of surgery. But it's it's good to to have that, huh? Instead of <laughs> yeah. Yeah. having no bone. I think I have the corda here, and now we should also find facial nerve. I'm very far inferior, as you can see. And do you always start so low in the nerve? You always start down there. Uh, sorry? Do you always start so inferiorly when you are looking for the nerve? Is this yeah, you can. Well, the, um, the main reason is that we uh, that I want to get a, a quite good exposure on a long distance. We already see cells opening to the mi uh, middle ear, and uh, I think she has quite a lot of uh, space here, so. Um, you must not perhaps do it that in fear. The main reason is if you go for, let's say, controlled exposure um, 
of the nerve means the nerve that we get uh, quite uh, quite easily where to place the electrode so we have more freedom in doing that so okay now I think here we are coming as if under just give you a better orientation Okay, so now you must not do it. I agree, you must not uh, always do it like that. Of course, we must. We also don't want to expose it uh, and uh, remove all the bone. But now, so we now we can. So we now we can here. So now we will see why we do it, because we will also be able to expose the corda quite nicely. And, uh, and uh, there is sometimes difficult to judge where the corda is. I mean, it will implantation, exposure of the corda uh, to preserve it, I think is something we should aim at. It's not the ultimate goal, but if we can do it, we should do it. So, and again, okay, have you got? Do you have sort of figures on damage to alteration in taste after this surgery? Yeah, Dr. Alsrani has done it in our department, and actually, you have bit of here. Um, you have uh, approximately 10% of uh, taste disorder. So that is that is corda here. That is facial nerve here. Some bleeding here from the from the cell. So, okay, now we have the branching. You see, okay, now we have the branching. Is the uh, fossa increase, and now we can work in this area. Build two nulla diamant, and and one number klein. I think one must be honest to to say that you, of course, have a risk uh, for damaging it. It's um, because sometimes you have really to expose it or even to transpose it, and that's. Uh, uh, risk we we always have. Yeah, and I think the patients, if they know of that risk, given the uh, improvement in hearing they get, they usually accept that, don't they? I think so, because they are, uh, and we can say that it will uh, improve by time. I mean, now from ear surgery, it's uh, mainly a transient problem. No? Problem, no? Okay, so now we have facial nerve. Now we can can work more here on removing bone in this area. So we've got some emails coming in from Malaysia, Thomas, where it's 38 degrees and 100% humidity, they tell us. Okay. And here in Utrecht, it's just uh, 4 degrees and it's 100% rain. 100% rain right of what? 100% rain. It's just raining and raining here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now you see we can, I think, uh, now determine our space we can work in. So we see facial nerve here, 
quarter here. The further input is here. The further input is here. And now we gradually can enlarge this area. Keep everything covered by bone. So a couple of minutes, uh, Thomas, we're just going to go to the Warsaw and then we'll come backwards okay. and forwards. Um, okay. which I'm just uh, going to ask now the Warsaw team if they can open up their operating theatre link so that we're ready to go to them at 9 o'clock. Okay. Um, but we're still with you at the moment. Okay, thank you. So Thomas, we're back with you now. We can see you've got a nice posterior tympanotomy. Okay, so you see we have now nicely done our work at the posterior tympanotomy. Just showing you the anatomy uh, as we have created it. So um, I hope you can see the details. Yes, we've okay. got a nice view, but perhaps you can just point out and talk through for the yeah. viewers. Uh, okay. So, so now you see here that is corda. No? Branching here from the facial nerve. Yep. That is facial nerve here. Then we have here done posterior terminal corda is up here. And here we have the buttress, which is preserved. Um, just the orientation you see here, the fossa incudis with the tip, the tip of the incus, which is here. No? So yeah, okay. we see. Now, so we have not we have not touched the incus, there's still bone here. And then we have in the depth, we have the tendon of the, fa uh, of the stapedus muscle, of the stapedus muscle, which is here. It's here the, the stapes, no? and uh, here's a joint. Now you can see it, I think, quite nicely. That is where the uh, uh, py pyramid process, or pyramidal process. And then we have here in the depth, the promontory. And here we have the niche with a round window. I hope you can see the round window. Yeah, so you can see that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see that, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now to, or we try, or like to expose it more. So we use a drill 1.0. So you see here, now 1.0 drill. And uh, I, I have tried to expose more of the membrane, so I use the angle from more inferior, and now you see why I like to uh, expose the the, mem, uh, the facial nerve quite inferior because it allows us to go from this angle and uh, remove the bone here in a controlled way. And sometimes Sometimes it's more overhang, and especially if you have a lot of overhang, then I think it's good to really start in this way. So the question, this question now, Thomas, is: uh, Are you going to do a round window insertion, or a cochleostomy? Well, that will be or a cochleostomy. Well, that, yeah, there's a so-called miscala or high focus five electrode from AB. So and there is in, intended to go through the round window. Uh, you could also, of course, do a cochleostomy because the patient, she has very residual hearing. It's not intended to preserve it, but you want to be, of course, uh, atraumatic. It means not if not only hearing preservation matters, but perhaps also to preserve cochlear structures. And so it makes, and so it makes sense to be, so it makes sense to be careful, no? And road uh, to be careful is just to know exactly where you are. Okay, bitte mal ein Häkchen. So now we have removed part of it, so we'll show you higher magnification. Nadel bitte. 
Hexenbindschung. Uh, and now you can see here that we have done more exposure now. now the membrane is now well visible here. Still some well visible hidden bone left here, and uh, and uh, fully exposed. Just I have to do that. And you see now it's quite good if you have done this exposure of the facial nerve inferiorly, so that we can control inferiorly and control core. Um, um, and this allows us to, to be, I mean, right there in a controlled fashion. Uh, so that's very important for the hearing preservation surgery. I would, I mean, in a hearing preservation case, I would do the same. No? It would be not a difference. So we're going to go back to, we're going to be going from one to another. So we're going to go back to okay. uh, Warsaw now. So if we can okay. switch back over. Okay, so we're now Thomas. Hello? So perhaps you can talk us, hi Thomas, perhaps you can just talk us through what you've been doing whilst we've been in Warsaw. Hello, hello. Hi, hi hello. Thomas, can you hear us? Okay, okay, yeah. So we just you. have done some, some more practical work here on the bone bed, yeah. Pinzette, bitte. Come, Pinzette. Danke. And you see, we have created the bone bed to recess, no? and uh, so the bed to recess, no? and uh, so the implant created a tunnel. Uh, will then bring the electrode forward yeah. and bring the electrode forward. Now this is a preloaded electrode, so we have to split it. Bring both of them on bitte. You can the thing on bitte. You can the thing from a metal reinigen and zwei Nullert hoch bitte. And uh, then we can basically place it. Uh, just have to just have to split the tunnel and the tunnel is important that we don't get any movement of the uh, of the implant and we still recess we still recess plant i don't have it just on yeah? the reason is very simple uh, we have very good statistics on implant movement no? and uh, we know what happens if we don't fix it and that's what we want to avoid that's Can why this move away from recessing you don't like that hello hi so the move the sort of trend away from recessing is not something you advocate it's not something you like um and you see it i mean a lot of people now argue about well flat implant or well flat implant just put on the bone uh, i'm i'm not convinced and, um, because I have this risk that, first of all, implant sticks out, which is not good for any trauma reason. Second, um, if you don't recess it, no, then it sticks out. Um, patients uh, complain about it, that's one thing. But the other is just uh, that if it's not, uh, that if it's not in, the in the bone with material for fixation, actually we don't need any screws or so, just the bone itself. Um, which um, which to me the best because you, let's say, go for screwing or which some implants now have this also. Uh, you have a risk of damage. Okay, bitte abnehmen. And um, damage of dura. So, but okay. So now you see we we are basically done with our bone work. Is this here is the sinus dura angle where the bone is always very thick. Yeah. Uh, even in small children, sinus is here, sinus goes in this direction, dura is up here, and here we have a very thick bone. Oh, it's good, yeah? Thank you. Uh, Thomas, okay. we've got a qu question come from China, asking not, not about you, but about the anaesthetists, and just saying these are nice conditions. What, what's the pressure, the systolic and the diastolic pressure of the patient? Okay, the question is not the Blutdruck. What do you have Blutdruck? How it's, um, it's uh, in mercury, it's um, millimeter mercury, so it's uh, 104 to 54, something like that. So we number pin setter. That's, that's very good. That's good. Good. Well, actually, yeah, we, we, we like, again, uh, we like to have uh, low pressure. Uh, so now you see the implant goes in. Okay, pin setter, so okay. It's, it's recessed. We can turn it, and now we see here the bridge covers the the um, electrode um, outlet. Uh, implant can't move forward. Um, actually, that's um, um, how we do it for.
proper fixation no? in all our in our cases. Oh, now we can go for we have prepared everything. The um, round window is uh, is so to say open. Uh, not open. It's uh, it's exposed. Sorry. And now we can go for uh, insertion. I have to clean. Bitte mal to clean. Can I ask you, Thomas, if you open one of these ears, you must have done at some stage, what, what do you find about the, the bed that you've put the, uh, the implant in? Do you find that uh, new bone forms, or does it remain like this? Yes, sometimes in children, we, we probably can have bone regrowth, mainly here uh, closing the muscle bead. Here at the implant, we normally have a pouch formatted by connective tissue, and here also this split might heal. No? Um, so, then bitte Aufstiegsauger, mittlere Größe. Um, so, actually, you get some remodeling in bo of bone by in bo of bone in children. Adults, it's um, much less. Um, and normally, we get a kind of mucosa um, lining in the mastoid. Um, so, the electrode is normally also somehow covered by uh, connective tissue. Um, but that's how we, how we normally see it. So it's just give the right exposure. So okay, then we must mal here gucken. You get the right magnification the center. This this the picture. Okay, now we see here the round window. We have actually not yet opened it, but it's nicely exposed now. Nicely exposed now. I see it. Yeah, we've got a lovely lovely view of that. Thanks, Thomas. Really nice. So das kleine dann Sauger bitte eine Nummer und dann die Kanüle zum Pieken. Okay, so danke. So now we make a, a puncture of the membrane. Um, so. so now it's just a needle, a hypodermic needle. We just make a puncture here. We just make a. Uh, Perimph is coming out. Very low suction. And uh, now make a slit. I. I think you can see it. See it. So now we can insert. And uh, what we use is a. Uh, is uh, just an, uh, a special insertion tool. Now this electrode comes as a preloaded electrode. You see here with a stylet in it, and it's a st uh, the principle is uh, advanced of stylet insertion. So we have here the first blue marker, which uh, says we first insert up to the first mark here, and then we hold the stylet with the forceps, and then we advance the electrode of the stylet. Um, so let's see that this works. Works. And not too high in the magnification, but just that we can see them. We can see them. So how can insert it through this? Yes, you see, it goes to the first mark. So I have to grab. Now we try to get it to stylet. Insert it deeper in. Okay, so now it's basically done. It's okay. Thank you. So zweite Pinzette bitte. Now the point is that um, the in incision is made in the dimension of the electrode. No? Once we have inserted it, probably the um, the, imp the um, cochlea is closed already just by the diameter of the electrode. So we don't n need to do more than this. Of course, you can pack some um, connective tissue if you want, um, but it's not necessary. So, Sauger, bitte. 
Und nochmal. Okay, so now the electrode is inserted to the second blue marker, which I only can see perhaps it's it's barely visible nochmal. Um, so they have an that's just the second blue marker is here. And it's now exactly at the cochleostomy or at the brown the window opening. And uh, so that is that's fine now. So that's as it should be. You can also use a special tool that comes along with the with this uh, electrode for insertion, but it does in principle does not matter. Now we also have a nice you see this S shaped S shaped here in the mid. Yeah, we see we that nicely. Yep. Yeah. We have the reference electrode. We have to we do some measurement intraoperatively with the uh, uh, PDS reflex and so-called NR, um, NRI nerve a uh, neural response um, imaging a bit of machine on pinzette um, so that's just to show that the implant is work the implant is working and the uh, nerve is responding now I uh, for that reason I just cover it here with a piece of uh, of muscle and then um, we are basically done it's closer okay so we can try to create a flap but it must not be in co in continu continuation with this, so we can just lay it on here. That's only for the measurement because you need a contact here, no? Bitte die Spule. So what we do is now stimulate the implant, and perhaps I can show you the. Haben uh, Sie Kontakt? Ja gut, Kleber bitte. Okay, now we first measure impedance, and second is that we measure the stepis reflex, so perhaps we have a chance to see that. And Dr. Haumann, she is the audiologist is here in the OR, working with us on that. So, yeah. Good, thank you. So, it's still contact there, yeah? Still contact there, yeah? Good. Good, thank you. So, now we look on the stepis. Good. So, now we look on the stepis. And uh, ich denke mal, auf so 250 können Sie schon mal drehen. Yeah. Okay, wait, 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 moment, moment, stop. I think you can nicely see it. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, we can see that very well. Okay, see that's so now. Actually, the electrode is right in place. The nerve is stimulated, and we get through this reflex uh, arch, we get a the movement of the muscle. No? So, um, well, that's what we what we do. Um, also for fitting in children because we don't have um, otherwise any how uh, strong the current should be. So it gives us uh, the threshold of this muscle reflex is uh, somewhat the most comfortable loudness level. Uh, and that's all the, uh, the C level, no? as it said. Um, and uh, that's nice to uh, for, for fitting in children, no? besides this NRI. No? Okay, well then, then we are basically done, we will close and then yeah. uh, Okay. And, and so there's I no more fixation of the electrode now. And, and so there's more for the electrode now. You just, that shape just holds it. I, I think so. You see, uh, there is an issue in, in uh, there's an issue in, in straight out. It's a pre-curved electrode. It's like uh, it comes out in curves. I can't show you because otherwise I can't get it in the cochlea anymore. So oh, this sure. is self-hugging, yeah? But if you have a, a straight electrode, what we would do is now just to make a groove here between um, the corda and the facial nerve. And then you can press the electrode in the groove. That is our mode yeah, of fixation, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is, I think, you, you have to expose the nerves for that reason. If you don't like it, you could probably also use, let's say, here some material like cement or um, uh, wax or whatever to fix the electrode and must do it. Now, in children, you have the problem of head growth, so the fixation should not be far away from the cochlea, away from the cochlea, otherwise the electrode would um, extrude it. Yeah, yeah. Clip. There's also a clip available, uh, which you can uh, place here around the buttress, and then um, the other here around the buttress, and then um, the other part of the hole, the electrode. It was invented by Dr. Müller from Würzburg, now Nick, and he proposed that and it also works quite well. So you would fix the electrode here at the buttress. That's also possible, no? Okay, that's great, thanks. Now, I think we're okay. going to just try and go back to the theatre in Warsaw, just for a few tips from there about their um, electrode place, their um, electrode placement, and how they secure it.